The following is a presentation of ESPN on ABC. You're watching College Basketball on ABC, presented by Amerisave Mortgage. Rough week weather-wise in Texas. You're watching the Big 12 on ABC. Frost and snow, millions without power. But we power up a basketball game for you today. No fans inside the Irwin Center for number 12, Texas, and number 13, West Virginia. All right, check out the standings in the Big 12. No doubt with Baylor up top, unbeaten, perfect at 9-0. Haven't lost this season. Kansas right now in the two spot. And Texas and West Virginia playing for seeding in the Big 12 tournament, but also possibly the NCAA tournament. Yeah, we welcome you to College Basketball on ABC. How are you? Welcome to our homes. John Chambi, Fran Frischilla. All right, Franny, this is a good matchup right here. Number 12, number 13. Let's rewind for a second, though. This is the second time these teams have squared off this year. Earlier in the season, in January, they went head-to-head, -head and it went down to the wire. Yes, it did, and Derek Culver went for a double-double that game. Texas guards played really well. Culver, a man inside. And on the final Texas possession, Courtney Ramey found Andrew Jones on the third anniversary of his leukemia diagnosis. He's been outstanding, John. He's a walking, talking miracle, but he's also playing great basketball for Shaka Smarts Club right now. You're talking about a guy who's a big-time recruit and dealt with Leukemia, the diagnosis, the treatment. He was the number 30 recruit in the country in 2016. And here he is in Big 12 play, averaging over 19 a game. Jump ball, and Texas comes away with it, and they will control. This is Matt Coleman underway from the Irwin Center. Three-guard offense, a lot of pick and roll, a lot of what we call ghost screens. Good finish inside. Right off the bat, John, got him, got Jericho the Sims. Jericho, yeah, snuck him to the basket, and he is going to do that if he gets the uh, alley. Well, the fake crowd is electric early on, Fran, you can hear him. It's eerie in there, John. Yeah. I did the Texas Tech game in there earlier in the year, and it is strange. Players, coaches, everybody. Culver spins, he gets fouled, they get that one on Sims. And Derek Culver will go to the line. So Jericho Sims picking up his first. And again, they had to make a decision because of the weather and the power outages. Texas, by the way, didn't practice basically from Sunday until Thursday. And they had to decide. They decided it was in the best interest. The players wanted to play, but no fans allowed. Very sparse in terms of media. And it is worth noting that the game does not draw electricity from the city of Austin. University of Texas, Austin generates 100% of its energy on campus, so it runs on its own microgrid. Yeah, it was, it was a crazy week in Texas, John. I'm a grizzled Northeasterner, as you know. But uh, we, had, we had an amazing week of crazy weather. Yeah, you're fast becoming a grizzled Texan, though, Franny. I mean, you have some experience <laughs> being down there. Is this as bad a weather situation as yes. you've dealt with since you've lived in that area? Absolutely. Yeah, now listen, we're used to it, but they're not used to, you know, five degrees, ice on the roads. It's not, they don't, you know, we don't handle it well down here because we're not used to it, John. Jumper there and knocked down at Texas off the Ramey three, up 5-1. Yep, and Shaka told us yesterday, Courtney Ramey, was hit hard by COVID, and they really need to get him back to playing the way he was pre-virus. He's the junkyard dog of this Texas backcourt. And uh, he is, uh, he's their best defender, big shot maker, and probably their best all-around playmaker as well. Of course, Matt Coleman's been a four-year starter, and we know how good he's been. Matthews here as he gives off. And McBride finds Culver. Quick double team, and then Coleman comes back, and Sims blocked him. And he'll go jump ball, possession arrow. Well, that's an important block by Jericho Sims because I think he's the best defensive center in the Big 12. And remember, he's coming off that early foul, doesn't want to pick up two, but that time he gets all ball, challenges the second shot by Culver, and we have a jump ball. 
Sims's stats are not uh, overwhelming, John, but he has had a very good senior year, especially on the defensive end. They're just verifying time on the clock over there. Our officials, Doug Sermons, Gary Maxwell, Marcus Pettigrew, I believe that's Doug Sermons over there. Shaka Smart, head coach for Texas. They're 13 and 5, 7 and 4 in conference. And Fran, this is just their sixth game in the last 35 days. Yeah, they they have really been hit hard. Uh, you know, there's two kinds of there's two kinds of COVID breaks. There's the COVID pause when your team or people on your team, staff, coaches, players, you know, are hit with the virus. And then there's COVID breaks when your team's fine, but it's the other team that's had to postpone. They've been through both, John. And of course, games canceled this week. The one up at Oklahoma because of weather. Little step back, nice shot, McBride. Last three games averaging just about 23 points a game. Boy, I'll tell you, John, he, he continues to grow into a star in the Big 12. We've seen it happen so many times. Brown lost the handle out of bounds. It stays with Texas. Greg Brown's made seven of his last eight three-point shots. Now, we've talked about his prolific athleticism and his future. But uh, knocking down those threes really helps this offense. Kid from Austin, who was a big time recruit, Greg Brown. Dad yeah, played football for the Longhorns. Here's Sims with Culver on it. Good D. Sims inside tried to reverse, couldn't do it. Rebound pulled down Matthews. Here are the Mountaineers. And that'll go. One of the things we've seen this year, friend, this is as good a three-point shooting West Virginia team as we've seen in a while. Yeah, it, it's the best since 2014, John. A team, but that team went 17 and 16. This is Bob Huggins' best offensive team. And remember, the offense morphed in early January after Oscar Shibwe left. They had a trip to Oklahoma. Jalen Bridges' first game, and here you see Bob Huggins heading to the Hall of Fame in the next year or two. But the offense has morphed from a power offense into a four-out offense. And you're right. They've got four guards shooting 36% or higher from the three-point line. Bob Huggins, one of the best coaches of all time. He is fourth among active coaches in wins. It goes Coach K, Jim Beheim, Roy Williams, Final Four a couple of times. A little chat there with Marcus Pettigrew. Yeah. Yeah, you know, he really did. You talk about great coaching. They really had to change their philosophy. They lost at Norman. They lost at Norman. And they came back from 19 down on Big Monday against Oklahoma State. And since then, their offense is really rolling. And there you see the numbers, uh, especially in conference play. They're outstanding. Gets his kids to play hard, develops that bond with them. That one off the mark from McBride. Longhorns the other way. We're tied at six. Jones. Finger roll, and it's good. Yeah, you see that athleticism. You know, again, it's not just an incredible story of his recovery from leukemia. It's the fact that he's playing great basketball right now, and the numbers bear that out. Good head fake. Inside, couple of fakes, went to the right hand and puts it in. Yep, and you see there's more room in there without Shibwe, and he's gone. He's off to Kentucky. I know you don't want to belabor the point, but you could see the spacing be that much better. Sims answers at the other end from in close. I like this kid. I I'm really impressed with the senior year of Jericho Sims. Now we're gonna have a great game today. This is gonna be a great one. Culver step back, wouldn't go, fight for the loose ball, and Brown pulls it down. And now it's Coleman. Coleman to three. Got it! He can knock that shot down. He's really improved year by year. He's not just a playmaker. In fact, Shaka told us yesterday, sometimes we probably need to let him score a little bit more. Sherman stepped to the left and a three wouldn't go, and now it's Ramey. Ramey trying pass. to find Sims. Brown collects. 
Sims, rebound, put back, it'll go. Yeah, he's dominating that offensive glass right now, the senior from Minneapolis. The youngest of six boys in that family, five of them have played major college football or basketball. 10-2 Texas run. Jericho Sims with six early points, and the Longhorns looking good. Saturday Showcase on ABC is presented by Amerisave Mortgage. Lower mortgage rates mean higher savings. The snowfall in Austin, it started on Valentine's Day. Icy conditions still exist. And the look at the Capitol building right there. Wow, I mean, unprecedented. Millions of people left without power and difficult to get anywhere. Six and a half inches of snowfall Sunday into Monday, third most in Austin history, and those freezing temperatures, widespread power outages, and of course, just the ability to get clean water. That's one of the issues that has taken place in all of Texas and Austin specifically. Jump for there. Yeah, no, no, short no doubt. Foul 14, 14 million people out of the 28 without power at some point during the week. Well, Franny, we're doing a basketball game, and one of the things with the power outages, et cetera, and the problems with water. Texas hasn't been able to practice, so that went on an extended stretch. So if you're coaching, what do you do in that spot? Yeah, Shocker, you know, we talked when we talked to Shocker yesterday, he said, listen, we've been through so much adversity this year, as has, as has everybody who's playing college sports. We just chalked it up to let's overcome this too. In fact, at this point in the year, believe it or not, sometimes rest is is critically important and, and it's but it's more mental than anything else John the mental health of these kids has been taxed this season Ty Jones buries one in Texas doubling up West Virginia 18-9 the other way and there's a rejection well, you saw in two plays the potential of Kai Jones a sophomore from the Bahamas Oh, oh yeah, Sims inside. What a start he's off to. Yeah. Eight points for Jericho Sims. He fouled out and had two points in the first meeting between these two teams. Well, this team is fresh, John, and, and again, it speaks to, okay, we missed practice, but they've been going since July. Jones. Sims not able to corral it. West Virginia does. Yeah, no question. Texas looks sharp. Remember, this is the first of a three-game Texas swing for the Mountaineers. They'll be here till next Thursday. Matthews off the glass and good. I think he's the X factor for this team. He's only had eight points in the last 65 minutes in two games. Last two games, he's got to give them a little bit more offensively. Brown tries. Look at, Look at this guy. And a Look at this guy. You know, John, he's grown on me all season. And we talk about Brown and Jones and the mock drafts. But this kid is as important to this to this team as any of their big guys. He knows who he is. He's not trying to be Kawhi Leonard. He's not trying to be Kevin Durant. He's just trying to do his job. Rebound, run, block out set screens and play hard averaging just a shade under eight points a game and already today with ten five of six and they've all been in close three dunks and the other two in close as well and this kid Sims he will play pro basketball don't worry about the stats but he just picked up a second. Oh, Savoyan with the bucket and the foul, and a big foul on Sims. Yeah, this is good. Watch Gabe O. Savoyan. He's going to go right through Sims, and what Sims has to do right there is stay vertical. Gabe's not going to score over Jericho's length at seven foot five. But you see right there, the great start offensively, but two fouls puts him in a bad way now if you're Shaka Smart. Abo Savoy in the Arkansas transfer. Oh, he's Dennis Rodman. 
He's Bob Huggins is Dennis Robin. You see Sims is going to go out. If I'm Shaka Smart, I don't leave him out. I don't foul him out of this first half. One well, of the things we've seen with Texas as the year has gone on, Shaka Smart's actually shortened their bench. Brock Cunningham in here. He's a key reserve for them. Inside of the bucket there for Royce Ham, who did not play in their last game, and the playing time has been sporadic for him. And yeah, there's a hoop you know, for McBride. And remember, he had a little tweet that showed his little disappointment in not playing. And he's going to get a chance now with foul trouble to give Texas a, another live body inside. It's like a travel and a turnover. Yeah, I, I like what Roy Sam has done over the last year and a half. John, February 15th, a year ago, this Texas team lost to Iowa State on the road by 29. It was Cunningham and Ham who helped jumpstart this team, and they are 18 and 6 over their last 24. Bam, downtown. And the Mountaineers, Taz Sherman drills that one. One of the things we touched on is how good a three point shooting team this is for Bob Huggins. Jones oh, yeah. had to take and it away. Remember, Sher yeah, Sherman's been banged up, so getting him back is important. Tweet can't hit. Ramey well, rebound. We, and we haven't called Taj Tweet's name all season long, the freshman from Wildwood, New Jersey. 6-7 kid who's getting a little action right now. Oh, and Cunningham got the block. Every summer, Dad would take me to Wildwood, New Jersey. Go on the rides, go on the boardwalk. Well, let's watch now. Cunningham thinks he's got all ball here. And a uh, little body down below. I guess you could call that a foul down low, but everything clean up top for Brock Cunningham, the Tasmanian Devil. Father played football at Texas. And they just called a tech on Brock Cunningham. So he picks up a second personal foul. Remember, John, you can hear everything down on the court today. Now that's a T. I, I don't know why they teed. If they teed him for that, that's not that's ridiculous. He, if he didn't say anything, and we can't tell, but they teed him for that. When you're in an empty arena and you're an official, I think you got to give these kids a little slack. It's a good crew out there. Maybe he me mentioned a word that you can't say on TV. That's a different story. Well, we could say it once, Brandon. <laughs> we could say it once, and we will never work again. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> Texas up by four, so a couple of fouls on Brock Cunningham, including the Tech. Doug Sermon saying two shots, relax. McBride gets the first. All right, a reminder over on ESPN and the at eight Eastern, it's number seven, Virginia at Cameron Indoor Stadium squaring off against Duke. It's a sonic blockbuster. And Shulman, Jay yeah. Willis. You know, Duke's Pretty playing well, John. They, they, they've won the last couple. It's about as big a game as Duke. Well, it's the biggest game Duke's had this season because they are mediocre. But they also are young, and they have a chance to put a stamp on the season tonight against a Virginia team that is seventh in the country. And Jalen Johnson left the team. He didn't opt out. Let's face it. He quit. Coleman buries one. Twenty-seven, twenty-two. Shock is smart with a word from Gary Maxwell. Longhorns lead. Look at how West Virginia has morphed during the season into a small ball team. When they had the two bigs in there early in the year, yeah, they were still pretty good. But look at the crowd inside for Culver on the drive. 
Since then, they've scored 80 or more points six different times, and you see the spacing, and it allows Culver to operate inside. So it's really worked out, John. They've got a score inside. They've also got three to four guys on the perimeter at any one time that can really knock down the deep ball, and that's a great adjustment Bob Huggins has made during the season. Did you see Culver? He's got 10 double-doubles. Texas leading by five. Fran, one of the things people have said about you and I together, we worked together for a long time, always good spacing. Yes, no question. And today especially, John. <laughs> Couple of fakes, kick out. McCabe with it. Good effort. Loose ball, it ends up with Coleman. Yep. No rust from Texas, despite missing three days of practice this week. There you see Jalen Bridges, who was in, promoted into the starting lineup when Shibway left. His debut game was 19 at Oklahoma. The redshirt freshman from Fairmont, West Virginia. The Polar Bears won two state titles there. Coleman lost the handle. Shot clock is under 10. Kick out Brown. Off the mark and a rebound pulled down by Jalen Bridges. Well, Bob Huggins playing Senny Engi right now. Another freshman in the game. Number 23. Ham had it. Got fouled. And Royce Ham will go to the line. It's going I don't to be know. Injured. Go ahead, Franny. Well, I was going to say it's going to be interesting, John, uh, because to see if Jericho Sims comes back in this half. Shaka Smart is one of the more, and this is statistically proven, one of the more conservative coaches when it comes to players with two fouls in the first half. He's in the bottom half of coaches in the country who will play his guys with two. And we saw the great start that Jericho got off to. So it'll be interesting to see if he brings him back in this half. I did a game earlier this year where Fats Russell at URI picked up four in the first half. <laughs> you know what that reminds me of? If I did that at Manhattan College as a first-year coach, no one would have known that. You right. could make mistakes at Manhattan. If you do that in the Big 12, people call for your job. Yeah. Ramey you know, reverses with the left hand. <laughs> Social media would crush you. Yes. If you did that at the highest level. Sherman step back. And a little box out. And it was Brown and Njai getting tangled up. Yeah, watch Courtney Ramey right here. Watch him use the other side of the backboard. Really good. Jalen, watch Jalen Bridges. He's trying to block it on the left side. And so Courtney Ramey has real good guards do on those drives. Uses the rim to put Bridges in jail. No way Bridges can get that shot unless he goaltends it. Under 10 to go here first half. Texas by seven with the ball. Nice. Coleman, good look inside as he finds Royce Ham. to get it inside Gary Maxwell it's the foul. Hey John let's go let's go back and what Texas is great at this watch this little go screen it looks like Ham's gonna screen but he's gonna disappear there's no screen and now with the double team out front nobody picks up Ham to the basket Texas is as good at that what we call go screen as anybody because what it does is it creates indecision at the point of the screen really well done Kai Jones, yep, with a lane violation. 
Culver's struggling with his free throw shooting, which is not great for Bob Huggins because he gets to the line so much. He's a 60% free throw shooter. But again, a physical guy, he'll get another chance right here. Hey, by the way, um, kudos to Jason Smith up at Brewster Academy because he's got two guys on the lane right now. One shooting, Culver and Kai Jones, the other were both graduates of Brewster Academy. Up, Have you ever been to Wolfboro, New Hampshire, John? I don't think Lake I Winna, Lake Winnipesaukee. All right, and, uh, yeah. Jason Smith. I've been there. Yeah, beautiful. Spider, uh, Spider Mitchell, Donovan Mitchell. A bunch of guys. Devontae Graham all come out of Brewster Academy. Adrian Johnson kick out. Sherman got it. Cash Sherman, like most junior college players, is far better in his second season. He's not going to turn 22 until July. And if I were him and his family, I would come back for that free year the NCAA has given him. I know he wants to play pro ball, but he's young enough where I think next season, as a 50-year guy, he could be really one of the best guards in the Big 12 and in the country. Jones inside, and one does it count. No, it does not. Do you see Taz at a Collin County Community College? Kedrian Johnson from Dallas knocking the, passing it to Taz Sherman who knocks it down. Unrecruited out of high school out of Missouri City, Texas. Went up and played for Jimmy Sagona up in Collin County in the Dallas area. And uh, Bob Huggins found him and McNeil last year, two Juco guys. And those guys in their second year at West Virginia have really blossomed into quality players. Well, Bob Huggins in West Virginia has consistently done a very good job mining, no pun intended, the junior college circuit, right? I mean, probably about yes. as well as any one of the Big 12. No question about it, John. You think back to uh, Jay Sean Page and Tavon Myers. By the way, we're, we're not in the arena, and there's got to be an illness issue with Sean McNeil because he has not played yet. We don't know for sure. I'll find out at halftime, but uh, Sean McNeil is coming off Big 12 co-player of the week, 47 points in his last two games. And, uh, and there you see him. I'm not sure. Did he? Has he played, John? Yeah, he played. He picked up a, a couple of early fouls. He got oh, there two early okay. fouls. Yep. My my apologies. But you talk about guys that have really stepped up for Bob this year. Tash Sherman and Sean McNeil. There's a guy that uh, spent about a week on the campus of Bellarmine University. Decided to go home to Union, Kentucky, which is about 30 miles south of. Cincinnati hung out for a year went to junior college in Ohio and it's really turned into a good player Texas by 7804 to go first half John Chomby Fran for Schiller. Thanks for joining us college basketball on ABC Loose ball and Coleman playing safety, able to collect it. Jones ball fake gets into the paint, out of bounds, and Doug Sermon says it's off Jones. And it'll be West Virginia basketball when we return. Yeah. Andrew Jones, he's got five, but take a look, he's shooting it from deep, knocking it down, saying, Oh, yeah, not a lot of fans here today, but I'm gonna do my thing anyway. Rusty, Texas, and Austin, the Irwin Center, and our game summary so far. The Longhorns with the lead by seven, shooting 70% and doing it in close sprint. 18 points in the paint for Texas. Jericho Sims has been really good. Really good. Picked up those two fouls with about uh, 12 minutes to go and a half. And so West Virginia caught a little bit of a break. See if they can get Culver going inside. They like to pass it from the foul line. Sherman step back jumper. Graze the iron. 
Good D. They took away Culver inside, John, and that that forced Sherman to shoot a contested two. Ramey flips it up and in. Good patience. He got into the lane, didn't run anybody over. Good pivot. Out of bounds, and it's Texas basketball. Yeah, and I thought, uh, watch, watch Courtney Ramey now. He's going to get downhill. Shot blockers are around. Pivots, turns away from Osaboy, and nice, nicely done by the junior from St. Louis, Missouri. Originally committed to Louisville. Played for Rick Patino. Things changed. And he's now a Longhorn. That's just Culver's second rebound of the game. Inside, and Miles McBride will go to the line. Miles McBride, who's been such a big part, really, their engine offensively. I talked about their last three games, averaging close to 23 a game. Cincinnati kid. Cincinnati Moeller, home of the, the Griffies. Yeah, the Griffies. Hall of Famers. Yep. And the Larkins. Exactly. Little Saturday prime time NBA, the Heat and the Lakers. It's an NBA Finals rematch. Jimmy Butler, LeBron James. It comes your way 8.30 Eastern, presented by AT&T 5G. Just a little over 70 days since the championship that crowned the Lakers to the start of the NBA season, and these teams are back at it. Kudos to those guys who are uh, playing hard. Anthony Davis out, but Jimmy Butler back for the Miami Heat. Ramey, that one off the mark. Anthony Davis out with that Achilles tendonitis strain. Inside Culver, weaves through traffic, got it blocked though, and a foul. Yeah, I think with Kai Jones in there, you got to feed Culver every chance you can. You're talking about 30 pounds or so of difference between the two Brewster Academy alumni. And I think Bob Huggins has got to get Derek Culver going a little bit. 29 and 14 in the last game he played against Oklahoma in that dramatic double overtime loss in Morgantown. You've heard me say it, John. Miss a couple free throws at a time. It's a invisible turnover. Gets one of them. That's good. Over shot his step in the passing lane. Here's Jones on the bigger player. And they turn it over. Yeah, tough pass. That's a tough one-hand pass by, Ray, by Andrew Jones. And tried to weave that pass through traffic. Five turnovers on the Longhorns, six total in the game. So each side done a pretty decent job of taking care of the basketball. Yeah, and I'd go again, I'd go back inside. Get Culver on Jones if you can. And try to bury him if you can. There you go. You're not going to throw it to me, I'm going to go get the miss. one of the hallmarks two teams in this league West Virginia and Baylor two teams I think that when you think offensive rebounding <laughs> those are the two teams right yeah no question a a, a missed shot is a pass to their big guys right Start Not of your offense guy. yeah oh yeah and a timeout as Coleman was being harassed Texas the lead is four five oh three to go here first half and we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. We take a look at the Big 12 standings. Baylor, the top dog, there's no question about that. Who, just in your opinion, is the second best Big 12 team? I don't know. I honestly don't know. Obviously, I'll Kansas is that. now on a five-game streak, but the, today was the first real... Well, they beat Oklahoma State on the road uh, at home, excuse me, quality win. Quality win, if they're winning today, they were winning. 
Uh, John, I'm not sure. I think it's a battle for two, three, four, five. And the key, I'm going to tell you something. I am so anxious to see Baylor return because we have no idea yeah. what they're going to look like. Now, Michigan has, has uh, you know, they didn't battle COVID, I don't believe. I think the pause was by the state of Michigan. But I know Scott Drew's program has battled the virus the last couple of weeks. So I'm really anxious to see where Baylor is vis-a-vis -vis where they left us a few weeks ago. And I don't think anybody knows. Yeah. But I know we this. Know I'd like to finish second. Right, when they're healthy and right, they are really special. Yeah, no question. Jace Febris comes in. Grant, he's yes. a guy that coming back from the knee injury hasn't played consistently, hasn't really impacted when he was healthy. He was starting and maybe their best shooter, but he hasn't been playing a ton. Big three there. No, this isn't. I, I like that he's getting minutes. He, he had a surgery last February 8th. And micro fracture is no joke, John. And you're yeah. right. Having having Jace back is big. Texas by six, thanks to the Febris three pointer. And we'll be back after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Saturday showcase on ABC is presented by Amerisave Mortgage. Lower mortgage rates need higher savings. Greenberg coming up at the half. We'll check in on the big one at the Fog, plus what we're calling Glimmer of Hope Saturday, right for Kentucky and Michigan State. Meantime, Coach Fran mentioned Baylor. What's realistic to, to expect when they come back? Think about it. Seven-day period, they're going to play three games in seven days. So, really, the one thing about Baylor is they have incredible depth. So, if one guy is not all there, they've got other guys, whether it's Flagler coming off the bench, they can step up. Meyer who can step up. My question for you, Fran, is three games, seven days, good or bad? Well, it's not good because I talked to Scott Drew a couple times this week, Seth, and I don't think they were returning as a team to practice until today or tomorrow. So, obviously, Baylor, John Shambi can handle it. They've got the experience, but I just think we are in uncharted waters right now. Villanova has not looked the same since they've been back. Michigan certainly did look good, but it all depends, John, on whether – did you have a pause or did you have a break because other teams had the virus? And, uh, and Baylor's team has been hit by the virus, so I'm anxious to see them. Good hands there. McBride the other way. Lob. Sherman jumper. Got it. Yes. And it's a two-point game. Right. Taz Sherman, McNeil, Bridges. These guys can all fill it up from deep. And... Texas shooting really well, but West Virginia is back in this game, John. Good. Not Hand a good decision. Andrew Jones to take away. Now Coleman kicks to the corner. Ramey all alone, and he buries it. What a turn of events. A steal leads to a three. Texas back up by five. Well, and a bad decision by Jordan McCabe. You can't throw the ball away in the open court like that. But good news for Shaka Smart. Courtney Ramey is back in form. Ramey has 11, and he uh, good, is fouled. Good job. He he drew that contact. He threw his body into the defender who was not in position. I just, just uh, Jordan McCabe, solid little point guard. I just don't like this decision right here. And then coming back the other way, off the turnover. That's a five-point, maybe six-point play. But good news if you're a Longhorn fan that Courtney Ramey is battling his way back after uh, the COVID pause. Fred, I want to make one point on Baylor, and that is this. Obviously, you know you know me, I like to look at the numbers stuff, but the fact that they're 17-0, and and they've won every one of their games by eight or more points, and the last team to do that was UNLV back in 91, doing it out of the Big West, not the Big 12. The yeah. numbers would tell you that if Baylor's won every game by eight or more, they're a lot better than everybody else in their league. Like a lot better than everybody else in their league. Yeah, I, I think that that would generally be true, but I'm a, also a big believer in the psychology of the schedule. 
And their toughest three, three of their toughest games are coming up, John. You know, in the next week, uh, yep. you know, I know I know they're going to Kansas on the 27th. It's going to be interesting. West Virginia goes to their place on Thursday. I will say this. The committee will make uh, they will make note of the fact that Baylor had this pause because I don't yeah. think there's any possible way they're not a number one seed even right now, regardless of what happens from now until the end of the regular season. Matthews saw him grabbing his shoulder, wincing a little bit. Emmett Matthews Jr., the junior from Tacoma, Washington. You know, he once committed to UConn. He was going to play at UConn for Kevin Ollie, and Kevin was fired, and he opened up his recruitment, but uh, he's shaking off that left shoulder. Let's take a look right here on the drive. And there you see it came down on that left shoulder, a shooting shoulder. I'm looking at that score, Mr. Shabby, and you and I have been in this league a long time. We know how good the defense is, but we got 46-41 right now. We're not at halftime, my man. Yep. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Yeah. Coleman trying to turn the corner and puts it in. Well done as he was just able to get the step on McBride. What is it you say if you're even? You're leaving. You got it. And hey, by the way, we have not seen Jericho Sims the rest of this half. So the conservative shock of smart, it's paying off. Doug Sermons pointing at the floor. I believe that means the foul's on the floor. Yeah, John, this is, a, this is what we talk about. When, you, when you're even with your man, he cannot get back in front of you. You see that right there? There's no way that Deuce McBride, as good a defender as he is, can, can keep Matt Coleman from getting to the basket. And then Matt finishes with the exclamation point because he is very good in that mid-range. The son of a coach, his dad is uh, coaching in junior college back in Virginia. Younger brother Chase, a member of the Virginia basketball team, and a guy that, as we've chronicled many times, has got a long relationship with Shaka Smart, known him since about the eighth grade. And this, t this duo has been just fine. He's one of those dudes that's always, they're just those guys, right, that feel like they've been in college basketball forever. Yeah. Matt Coleman. Oh, yeah. One of those, right? <laughs> And by the way, he can come back for a fifth year if he wants. That's right. That's right. Yes, <laughs> and then he gets his AARP card. Yeah. Sean Miller was the all-time. Sean was actually in school for six yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> I remember, oh, nice. Ramey. As Sherman went sprinting out on him. Have you see Matt, oh, excuse me, Courtney Ramey right there. Cunningham's back with the two fouls and the technical foul early. I, I gonna ask Shaka Smart after the game what he said. I don't know how you feel, John, but uh, I've been in a couple of these arenas with no fans and everybody's got a tough job this year. I, I just think the officials in late season, when everybody's on edge, you gotta give these kids a little bit of slack. Coleman able to get through and put it in. Now his penetration is causing West Virginia trouble. Look, look, at, look at Texas right now. They are shooting nearly 70%. McBride puts it in. Well, what I like about that is they're likely to get another possession. So it was, I don't know if he did it on purpose, but a little two for one action right there. Inside Jones with the layup. See that clock running? In college it runs. So see now it's basically a last possession situation. In the NBA it stops. You can get a pure two for one, but the clock ran. They didn't inbound it in time. Mountaineers will get the last shot, likely. You can see Shaka Smart bottom of your screen. He slapped the floor now. Urging his defense the... on. Shot clock under 10. McBride looking for space. 
Loose ball, Culver right there, and he couldn't put it in. Culver didn't realize the game clock was not at the shot clock, so he babied it up there and then surprised himself on the miss. He thought the, the horn was the game clock, and so he, he knows he had a chance at a point-blank basket. Ramian Coleman with 25 of the 53 first half points and Texas leads it by 10. Time now to send it to the studio and we say hello to Kevin Connors and Seth Greenberg. Austin, Texas and at the break, Texas is season high 53 first half points and they lead it by 10. Welcome back, John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. And franchise first half. How about Texas shooting 70% early on? It was Jericho Sims and then a host of others that got the offense rolling. Exactly. In an Arctic week in Austin, it was West Virginia who was cold early, 38%. But for Texas, it started with Jericho Sims on the defensive end, the block shot. Of course, he had 10 points. In 10 minutes, got two fouls, so he sat out the rest of the half, but he made his presence felt. But then it was the Texas backcourt. Ramey and Coleman particularly, they combined for 25 points, seven assists. Ramey to the hole right there. Matt Coleman doing a little bit of magic, dropping dimes, making, making plays. And 53 points, John, is a season high for Texas. So a team that did not practice for three days has come out red hot in this first half. The good news for Bob Huggins is they have shot poorly. You see the numbers speak for themselves, and they're only down 10 points. Yeah, I think that if a team shoots 70% and a half, you usually expect that team to be up by more than 10. But here we are, Correct. Texas with yeah. the basketball. I've given that halftime speech before, down 10, by the way. All right. We're still in this game, guys. Ramey as they kick opposite. Got it. Big three. Good look from Sims. Yeah, sure was. He caught it and looked opposite like any good big guy does. And you like Coleman getting up the floor. But this is great basketball. Big guys, you teach them to catch and look middle. When you look middle, you see 75% of the floor. There's the pass, and Jericho Sims, who had a tremendous first half before the two fouls, getting started uh, in this half right away with a great dime. Biggest lead of the game for the Longhorns. And Culver struggles from the line continue. Other than free throws, this young man as a junior has had a dominating season for the Mountaineers. The Maturity level is sky high. His effort level is always high. But again, can't miss those free throws because he gets fouled so much. Johnny draws six fouls a game. Yeah. McBride just outside the paint. That was long. That's good. Jones had it knocked away by Bridges. It'll stay Texas basketball. Yeah, I like the way they pushed it. Jones got out quickly in transition, but Jalen Bridges, the freshman red shirt, made a nice defensive play and stopped an easy opportunity for AJ1. Coleman, Ramey, yeah. Sims all in double figures. Ramey. With a game high 16 as Coleman buries one and he's got 15. Great offense right there. Texas is not really a pick and roll team. They're more of an isolate the three guards team. And that time they got the ball in the lane off the dribble, a couple extra passes, easy three point look. Bridges spinning and he walked. Let's watch, John. Now, they'll set ball screens. They'll set those fake screens, the go screens. But see, watch him get downhill. Draws the defender, and then Kai Jones, nice job. Extra pass. They use the ball screen to create isolation situations for the three guards who are really good in that area. There you see another ISO right there. Ramey from deep. Yep. Got another. 
That's what we're talking about right there. They don't need the ball screen. Sometimes the ball screen brings the extra defender to the play. These three guys operate terrific in space. Jones tried to take it away. And Culver on the receiving end there as he throws it down with two hands. Texas leading by 17. Shooting 73%, John, but let me just tell you, West Virginia has come back from 19 down before this season at Oklahoma State about a month ago. Ramey short, McNeil rebounds. And Ramey should not have babied that ball because McNeil's got the two fouls. He, got, he should have gone body to body right there. Over looking for some kind of help. That's from way downtown. McNeil. Jones rebounds. Texas shooting 71% in this game. Yeah, and look at their spacing. They're playing four out around Sims. That's not a shot I would have taken that early in the clock if I were Kai Jones right now. Culver beyond the free throw line and he gets it to go. Make sense of that. He can't make the free throws, but he makes the foul line shot. Yeah, there's Sims in close. Yep. He's the uh, he is their underrated player. This team today they look like the team that we saw in the top five early. Yeah. They've got the two prodigious young players who are off to the NBA soon. But maybe the most important guy on that front line is Jericho Sims. McBride to McNeil. What I like about McNeil and Sherman is they they never they have amnesia. They never hesitate. They miss two or three in a row. They're always coming back for more. And Sims fouled by Culver, who did not like the call. Jericho Sims has been the energizer bunny today for Shaka Smart. Little foul trouble, but that doesn't keep him from finishing at the rim. Screaming at him. And there's a timeout. Yeah, and eventually a timeout. And here they go. Watch this. Andrew Jones gives him the Heisman, and then they are going to get after it. And I'm talking about holding each other back and and it, you know it's interesting I've been on a lot of these huddles John and sometimes it's just two competitive guys junkyard dog in it and Courtney Ramey apparently was upset with the lack of effort by Jones and uh, interesting to see what's going to happen here this is part of competing and we'll keep an eye on that Andrew Jones has been uh, terrific all season on the offensive end. Puts the boy in, feeds it down low. And inside bucket for Matthews, who puts it in. Here they come. They've made up seven points from that 19-point deficit, the Mountaineers. They've done it before this season. Well, you, know, you know Brown's going left. That's great scouting report by Deuce McBride because Greg Brown is either going to shoot the three or he's going to drive left. He's a young man in the midst of learning how to play the game, working on his footwork, and Deuce McBride just went scouting report on him and took away the left, the, the drive to the left. Austin and that's likely. It. He was the number nine recruit in the country this year. And yeah, he'll grab a seat, but he's not scored in this one. Big stop for West Virginia. Really Turnover. good defense, John. Yeah, no, Osa Boyan came over and double teamed Coleman, and uh, he caused a little bit of havoc, if you will, on the part of that offense. 
Texas the seven turnovers. The Longhorns lead is a dozen under 15 to go second half. Number 12 against number 13. John Chambi and Fran Fraschilla. McNeil from way downtown. Yep. Here they come, John, from 19 to 9. In the blink of an eye, really. Oh, Texas is out of sorts right now. You can just watch them. Ramey. Big they needed one. it. Yep. So McNeil started chasing, and then Texas eventually found the open guy in the Longhorns. 11 threes lead by 12. Presented by Amerisave Mortgage. 14.27 to go here, second half. And Texas by a dozen. John Chomby, Fran Fraschilla. Andrew Jones not back on the court. He appeared to be rubbing his back. I'm not sure what the, the issue was, but he was doing some stretching, and obviously he and Ramey have already gotten into it. Yeah, the, the possession that seemed to set Ramey off was the lack of effort by Jones on the three. Yep. Then you wonder whether Jones was hurt and couldn't get out to McNeil. And so we have a little bit of a soap opera here. And as someone who's been in, has experience with those huddles, I'm anxious to just see how Texas continues to react, John. Fight for that loose ball, out of bounds, Texas basketball. I thought that ball was went off. Yeah, Joseph Boyan agrees with me. He, he thinks it went off of uh, of uh, Big Sims, and Sims smiled when he walked by like I got away with one. Bob Huggins displeased. I would agree with Bob on that particular call. Yeah. Mountaineers down a dozen. Looks like a little zone now by West Virginia. Andrew Jones back in the game. Ramey harassed, offensive foul, and down goes Emmett Matthews Jr. Wow. Yeah, they, they trapped Ramey, and Ramey turned around. Now, Ramey's supposed to be allowed space, but uh, Emmett Matthews took it right in the head. Mountaineers went to a little bit of a zone, and Matthews decided to trap the ball. It's Ramey's third foul. Take a look right here. And Doug Sermon says that's an offensive foul. Thought he might have invaded his space, but he you know what's a lot funny? better live. View. Live, friend. I thought yep. it was a good call. I don't know, maybe, but I, I, I agree with what you just said. I felt like he, he may have gotten in yeah. his space a little too much there. Because remember, Ramey has to make a basketball play by pivoting and turning. And uh, as I've said often in February this month, John, everybody, coaches, players, referees, everybody's a little edgy right now. Been an incredibly tough year for everyone. Sims able to pull it down, and now Jones handles. Texas by a dozen. Cunningham to Jones as they move the basketball. Andrew Jones. Coleman will try. Gets a three. And Texas with a dozen three pointers. Matt Coleman now with 18. Good ball movement off the initial shot, and then the offensive rebound leads to the open three. But it started with ball movement. And Bridge is able to answer with a triple of his own. Well, he's been quiet today, only a sixth point, but second three on the day. Still plenty of time for the Mountaineers. Step back, Jones. That was short, loose ball. Well, you know Brock Cunningham's going to be somewhere in that scrum. And let's see what we have here. Jump ball. He's talking a little bit more trash. 
He's already got one tee today. Easy there, big guy. Take a look. You got to see, this is, everybody should be on the floor right here, including Sims and Andrew Jones. When that ball hits the floor, it should be first to the floor. By the way, it was not ruled possession arrow. It was ruled a foul on Brack okay. Cunningham. Yeah, yeah, you cannot. I, th I thought that was a possibility. You can't jump on the pile. I mean, remember, remember dog piles, John? Sure. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, no dog piles in, <laughs> in college basketball. Sometimes just the fun thing, right? Yeah. West Virginia down a dozen. Yeah, the rebound pulled down by Greg Brown as the freshman came flying in. Coleman. And they got Kai Jones for a travel. Footwork. You got to know, see, 88 by 44. Dick DeVenzio, a great basketball mind, who's no longer with us, played at Duke. He used to say, the players have to play. They can't play 94 by 50. They got to play 88 by 44. They got to know the geography of the court. And that time, Kai Jones steps out of bounds on the sideline. Longhorns on the run. Coleman from Andrew Jones. Texas has been in control most of the afternoon. West Virginia sitting in that zone, John, and matching up out of it, but they've changed, they're trying to change the tempo of the defense because the man to man was ineffective. Ham had a pretty good look at it. Just inside the three point line, and McNeil drains one. They're in striking distance. This game is far from over. And remember, this is this is Bob Huggins' best offensive team, I think, honestly, since potentially the Final Four team. These guys can score points. See, they're playing a zone, but they're matching up man out of it. Jones step back. That three wouldn't go, and the rebound pulled down by Osaboyan. Inside, and McBride absorbs the contact and he'll go to the line when we return 10 point game 11 04 to go for Chelt and Valdez should be a good one John report. yeah Valdez is going up a weight class he's not fought at that junior uh, junior lightweight weight too often only his third fight so uh, it'll be interesting to see how he handles it here we go Neil drains one and it's an eight point game here we go, John. It was a 19-point lead early second half, and since that little scuffle in the Texas huddle, I, I said this to you during the break, there was a dark cloud over that huddle once they had the tete-a-tete -tete between uh, Ramey and, uh, and Andrew Jones, and they've lost their offensive mojo. Did they get it back here? Nope. Ramey off the mark. Jumper wouldn't go from Taz Sherman. In the second half, Sean McNeil has been a big factor. Yeah, watch this right off the screen. Inbounds, catch, shoot, fade away. He's such a great story. Young man from Union, Kentucky. He spent a Thursday afternoon taking two classes at Bellarmine, the school, the biggest school that recruited him out of high school. Went home to Union, Kentucky. Hung out for a half a semester, ended up going to junior college in Dayton, got heavily recruited by the country. Bob Huggins was in early, and he got him to sign with the Mountaineers. Ramey rips it away. Jones, quick move, Sims in close in the stuff. He's in, a, he's in a perfect spot. We call that the dunker spot. Oh, he got beat up the court. He celebrated his dunk, yeah. and he was two steps behind Culver. He knew it. Couldn't make up the distance. And you like Derek Culver running the floor like that. We call a guy like Derek Culver, John, the unknown runner, because he'll run hard not knowing whether he'll get the ball or not, and that time he beat Sims up the court.
There was just that little pause from Sims yeah. on the way back. Watch this now. Let's see if we can get it. Well, this is going to be a long replay, but you'll see that ball go in. And then jogging, jogging, rubbing his chest. Uh oh, and too then, late. Yep. Too late. See? That's right. Oh, that, oh, I would, oh, I wish I had that on film the next day in the locker room. We'd be running that back 15 times. I'd be rubbing my chest as the coach 15 times in front of the front of the team. Do we need it. It really needs to be 15 times. I'd probably do it 10 times, but I'd make my point. Longhorns move with the ball. And a steal there as Matthews comes away with it. Matthews wouldn't go, but he'll go to the line. Man, he's ended up on the floor a lot today. He's had a good day today, Emmett Matthews. He's already got 11. The steal, remember, this is a guy with uh, six points in about 65 minutes. Good anticipation. And then he's off to the races, and Ramey reaches in. If that's Ramey, that's four, John. It is Ramey, and it is four. Yep. And he's been, like I said, a junkyard dog today. You see the numbers. And all of a sudden, this game, in my opinion, the momentum has switched to West Virginia. Now, still trail by eight, but they're playing like the team that uh, we expected them to we expected to see today. The lead is seven, nine forty to go. You see that zone, you'll see they just trade guys off. It's like a two three matchup zone. Everest came to rescue. Now back to Coleman. Sims working on Culver. Look at this. Look at this. See, Sims is not a threat. They know he's going to pass out, so they read the, read the pass. Here they come, John. Right there. And all of a sudden, it's a four-point game. This is deja vu because they trailed Oklahoma State on the road by 19 early second half. But this game, they've got more time to come back. And Deuce McBride, who is a Mario Rivera of closers in college basketball, gets them back within four. It's a 13-2 run. And, West and John, Virginia you have within four. I don't know about you, but I think this Texas team has not been the same since that altercation in the huddle. The, the balloon went out of the, you know, the air went out of the balloon, in my opinion, when Ramey and Jones got into it in that huddle. Now the question for Shaka Smart is how long do you sit Ramey with four fouls but 22 points? Coleman out there with Andrew Jones, Greg Brown, Jericho Sims, and Jace Feverance. Oh, and they get the walk, wow. and Matt Coleman yep. saying, where's the foul? Coleman thought he got pushed by Sean McNeil, and they didn't give it to him. Well, this is a confident offense by West Virginia. Remember, this is as good an offensive team as Hugs his hat. They can put points on the board. Culver goes to work. Tries to dish off. Coleman to Jones. Sims. How about Andrew Jones? One of the smaller guys out there. I mean, it's all relative. He's 6'4", yeah. but still yeah. wandering inside and gets the tip. It's a basket you don't want to give up if you're West Virginia. These, these guards don't mind playing one on one. Oh, oh my man, is he hot? Sean McNeil mind. in the second half has been on fire. 
They just they're, they're a lot. They're a lot like Texas. They you give them some space. They will play one on one. Coleman answers. And this is what we talk about spacing. Watch Culver down low, four guards out, maybe a ball screen, but they will they will keep this floor spread now. This is Matthews. Matthews. John, this is exactly what Bob Huggins needed from Emmett Matthews. He had eight points in the last 65 minutes in two games. That's a season high for him as Jones couldn't quite finish. Not a good decision. Not a good decision there. See if Culver can guard Coleman. Too easy. 76 73, 649 to go. Saturday Showcase on ABC is presented by Amerisave Mortgage. Lower mortgage rates mean higher savings. How about Sean McNeil? No points in the first half. Coming off Big 12 Co Player of the Week. Played two minutes with two fouls. He sat. Second half on fire. 13 points. And something that West Virginia fans have gotten used to with McNeil, McBride, and Sherman. Sounds like a law firm. And that is guys that can heat up, and it doesn't have to be one or the other. Could be any one of the three, and when they're all on, John, they are a dangerous team. And Sean McNeil, a great second half. He had a foul on the floor, so McNeil sitting here. 6.46 to go. Another and it'll go the other way. Sims yeah. lost it. Wow. Hey, John, a lot. Along with the altercation in the huddle, West Virginia has switched to a, it, it's a zone, but they're playing man to man out of it, and they're really aggressive. And that also has changed the flow of this game dramatically. Sherman couldn't hit. McBride a three, and we're tied. Now give Osaboyan another assist, John, because the ball fell in his hands and he kicked it right back out. Third tie of the afternoon. West Virginia last led this game at 6-5. Inside, and they get the block on Osaboyan. Well, we talk about the charges, deflections. Watch Osaboyan. Now, this is, I'm going to tell you something. He's got 48 assists on the season. This is a guy that plays 18 minutes a game. He's not a scorer. He's averaging a point. He's averaging under two points a game. But think about that for a second. 48 assists from the, basically, the low post spot. Coleman straight on. Can't hit. Rebound pulled down and Mountaineers the other way. It's amazing how they've made up the 19 points. McBride can't hit. Brown swoops in for the board. Greg Brown has not scored today. Jones lost the handle briefly. Couldn't get that to go. And now the Mountaineers the other way, a chance to yeah. take the lead. Good hustle. This game's going to come down to 50-50 balls. Offensive rebounds, floor burns. Sherman going to work. Shot clock winding down. And Osaboyan gets fouled. They did a good job of recognizing the switch out, out front. And they went inside to Coleman's man, Osaboyan. Now, the, the only bad thing now is Osaboyan, not a great foul shooter. Shooting 
Arkansas transfer, kid from Canada. Not a great free throw shooter. Big 12 now, ESPN Plus. It is a must have for Big 12 fans. Coming up later, Kansas State at TCU. That's it. 5 Eastern, Tuesday night, Iowa State and number two, Baylor. And Big 12 now is the home of the early round for the women's tournament starting March 11th. If you're a Big 12 fan, you got to have it. Jalen Bridges picking up number four. These two teams met January 9th, a game one by Texas on a jumper by Andrew Jones with about a second to go. 72-70 at the Coliseum at Texas with a road win. Worth noting, by the way, into today in the Big 12, the road team is 30 and 29 in conference play. Well, you and I have followed this league closely this year. There's really very limited home court advantage without crowds. The Irwin Center right now is spooky because there's no fans. Take a look. You've got the cutouts, but essentially team personnel only, some building personnel, and that's it. Jones lost it. It's a turnover. Yeah, this is sloppy. McBride inside. Sherman, ball fake, and he'll go to the line and a chance to give the Mountaineers the lead. I want to say I'm surprised, but I've seen West Virginia do this this season. And really, the game in, the, the game in Stillwater really in some ways changed their season around because they did it with a small lineup. Hugs played six guards that night. And it was the largest comeback, in, in, I believe, in the history of the program on the road. And they may be able to do it again. If you're Shaka Smart, you just want to get the momentum back and you want to find a way to close this game out after playing brilliantly for 20 minutes. First lead since being up 6-5. Shaka Smart's team has been on top by as many as 19 in this one. And remember, John, 53 at the half was their, the most points scored in a half this season. They have 23 to this point. Longhorns down by two. Kai Jones lost the handle. West Virginia basketball. Unbelievable. Just a simple pass to Jones. He drops it. And if you're just joining us, there was an altercation early second half between Jones and Ramey for Texas, and the air fell out of the balloon from that point on. McNeil step back three and he was fouled. Now does he get three free throws? I think he does. Wow, West Virginia by two, under four to go in this one. 42, Kofi Coburn, 18 points. Meantime, the return of Samuel Williams and the Louisville Cardinals. First game since February 1st on a lengthy COVID pause. It's a critical matchup in Chapel Hill. Comes your way, 6 Eastern ESPN. Back to Boog and Fran. Yeah, thanks. Two-point game. Texas coughing up a 19-point lead. And earlier in the second half, Jones and Ramey, after Ramey was barking at Andrew, they got into it a little bit. Watch that to the right of your screen. And it wasn't like one or two seconds. It went on for about 30 yeah. seconds. And at this point, Texas was firmly in control of this game, John. They were brilliant in the first half, shooting about 70%. And Ramey had a problem, I think, with Jones's defense. And there's the numbers. And they, they just don't lie. I mean, we said this, you know, when it happened, that it could be something that deflated their confidence. Uh, Swag, if you will, and I think it has. And 
This is now a 24-point turnaround in about 15 minutes. And you see it's a zone. Texas hasn't solved it yet. Ramey got it. They needed it. Big, yep. 25th point of the night. He's got four fouls, but good job of penetrating the middle of that zone and creating that open shot at the top of the key. West Virginia trying to bring it home. McBride kick out to the side, Sherman. Good effort by Jones, because that, that's what we're talking about, getting that 50-50 ball. See if Texas can get some movement against the zone. Just move some white jerseys around side to side. Ramey. Buries him. Wow, and they're back in front. How about that? Courtney Ramey has just taken over after coming back in with those four fouls. Career high 28. Jaka Smart told us yesterday they needed the pre-COVID pause Courtney Ramey back in their lineup, and they've got it today. Oh, that might be five. Sims blocks it. Sherman draws the foul, and I think that's going to end the day for Ramey. This is a smart play by Taz Sherman. Well, shame Courtney Ramey's going to bury this shot from deep, second one in a row, and that puts him up one. And what I love about Taz Sherman is he took Ramey to the lane, knowing he had four fouls, and got him to leave his feet. What's the thought there, Fran? I mean, from a coaching standpoint, if, if you, I mean, just this specific game, with as valuable as Ramey has been offensively, would you prefer him to bail out defensively yes, in yes. that spot and not foul, or would you rather him contest? No, no, I'd rather, I'd say, listen, give up the two there, but I also, your team's got to be aware that your best player today has the four fouls, and someone, take a look, someone's got to come and double. See, I would rather Jericho Sims leave right here. And he gets a piece at the end. And quite frankly, there wasn't much contact there, but there was enough to call the foul. The other four players have got to be aware that Ramey is in a bad way with Sims. And, excuse me, with Sherman on him. And it's just a smart play by Taz Sherman. You see them all standing around in the zone. Jones from D. Culver pulls it down. It's a one-point game. How about this one? Oh, man. A lot of weapons out there for West Virginia. Texas needs a stop. McBride with Coleman on him. And they got Coleman with that foul. It might, it might have been Cunningham reaching, John. I'm not sure. Oh, it's Coleman. A reminder over on ESPN and the app 8 Eastern, number 7 Virginia at Cameron Indoor Stadium, squaring off against Duke. It's a sonic blockbuster. Superstar Canadian broadcaster Dan Shulman will have the call of that along with Jay Billis. Canadian Baseball Hall of Famer That's Dan right. Shulman. And my friend. Yes, and mine. Two-point okay. game. Watch how they deploy the zone now. Now, they're, now it looks like they're going to... They're matching up. They're showing zone, but it's really man-to-man. -man. And you have to get some movement, maybe some ball screening. Coleman inside, piece of the paint, kick out, Brown, in and out, wow. Oh, it hurts. That was down and in, and back out. Still has not scored. Timeout, West Virginia. Bob Huggins' team showing a lot of guts in this one, down by as many as 19. 
They gave up 53 first half points and 70% shooting to Texas would not go away. And here they are up by two with the basketball 116 to go on the road. Here's what they've got John. They've got the possession arrow in their favor. They've got two timeouts. They got four creators. They also have five guys who shoot over 80% from the foul line. But this possession here to me you can go a couple different ways. You can go with your closer McBride or you can pick on somebody on Texas to take advantage of. If Greg Brown is out there, he has four fouls or just the best matchup you feel comfortable with. But remember, you have the closer in Deuce McBride, the sophomore from Cincinnati. So McNeil to inbound. McBride leads the Mountaineers with 17, and he's got the basketball. Looks like, looks like it's going to be Deuce. Got to shoot. Shot clock violation as Sherman couldn't quite get it off. No, and he had to shoot it over Kai Jones, who was guarding him that entire possession. Good job by Jones. Back to now they're straight. Looks like straight man to man now. Ball Where are you going to Texas? Well, I think you're going to go ball screen and create isolations. Here's a good one here. Remember, they got three guards that can make plays. Oh, wow. Sims found Kai Jones near the basket, and it just fell out of his hands. This is the seventh turnover of the second half, and Kai Jones has dropped a number of passes today. Now, if you're Texas, you're likely going to have to foul. And remember, West Virginia can put some guys on the line that can make free throws, but first, Texas is going to go a little 1-2-1-1 one, 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 full court pressure. Remember, Jones is six foot ten. And Sherman cannot run the baseline here. Hopefully he knows that. And there you see Gary Maxwell telling him such. Sherman pushes it up ahead. And that's the guy I want with the ball. Now Jones on McNeil. Jones is a good defender for his size. There it oh, is. They took it away. And then McNeil fouled Coleman. That, that was a bad matchup for West Virginia because Kai Jones, for a guy six foot ten, we saw look, watch him move his feet now and watch the length, John, right there. The kids got over a seven foot wingspan. And I didn't like that matchup for West Virginia because I've seen Kai Jones guard these kind of players before, and it was the second time in a row that he created a stop. Coleman is their best free throw shooter at 84%. Matt today has not shot a free throw. Too strong. He can't call timeout. Out of bounds and it's Texas basketball. That's right. He cannot call timeout when he's in the air heading out of bounds. New rule. About three years ago. Yep. Texas calls time down two. 6.8 to go. Watch, watch McNeil now. In the old days, you could call timeout if you had possession before you stepped out of bounds. That is no longer the case. And McNeil knows that he should have gotten rid of the ball if it was going to be safely thrown to a teammate. Well, I mean, he may know it now. I don't think he knew it at the time. It doesn't happen much anymore because no, it does. Coaches, yeah, because players and coaches are aware of that situation.
Now, if you're West Virginia, you don't want to give up a three and go home. If they make a tough two, then you at least you go to overtime. I worry about Coleman with the ball because of his size, although he's made yep. two buzzer beaters in the last 20 or so games. Remember the shot he hit against North Carolina in the Maui Invitational. But Jones can create his own as well, and you also have to be concerned if you're West Virginia about the offensive glass and the tip in, particularly from Sims. As they play the theme from Rocky gently in the background. So a couple of last minute shots, last second shots for Texas this year, including this one against West oh. Virginia. Under two seconds, Andrew Jones buried it, and that was the difference. And the Longhorns come up with a repeat performance. Six point Watch eight to Coleman. go. Rainey Watch is Coleman. fouled out. Coleman to the ball. There it is. Coleman looking for space. Jones. Out of bounds. They're, they're going to check the monitor. It's not over yet. He had a pretty good look at it. It was a great play, by the way. A sensational drawn up play. Coleman got the ball. He could have shot it as he dribbled away from Jones. They set a down screen for Jones. It was extremely well executed. And Shaka Smart can't do anything more than he did. Now, the problem for Texas is if it's below three tenths of a second, take a look right here. We'll see when the, the ball has to be hit out of bounds in order for the clock to stop. Two. It's going to be point two. two, it looks like. Yeah. John, you couldn't draw a better play than Chanka Smart drew up here. Got a really good look. He sure did. Andrew it was Jones. really well executed. Now you're going to see Matt Coleman come to the ball, and he's going to use Sims, and then watch Sims screen down again. And you know what? As Jeff Van Gundy says, good coach, bad coach, good coach, bad coach. <laughs> if it goes in, you're in a great air. coach. Yep, yeah. as it's in the air. Well, they put point three on. So this can only be a tip in now at the rim. And the more dangerous thing for West Virginia is not the tip, but fouling the tipper. Because if you foul a tipper, it's a it's considered a uh, a shot attempt. A tap is a shot attempt. Do not foul the man who's tipping it. The logical guy here is obviously Jericho Sims because he can touch the top of the square. Sure. Round two, though. Yeah. Yep. Has to be a tip. Timeout, West Virginia. How about that? All right. Mountaineers, by the way, trying to win their fifth straight conference road game, which in this league, I don't care what you say, fans or no fans, <laughs> that's impressive. Well, this is the easy one this week. Well, actually, they go to TCU on Tuesday and obviously Baylor on Thursday. Now, here's a couple things. Matt Coleman is your best passer for Texas, but he's six foot two. And Bob yeah. Huggins has Derek Culver on him at 6'10". So Matt Coleman has got to make the play over the top of Coleman. And again, I'm not going to, I'm beating a dead horse, but it cannot be a catch and shoot here. It, and you see Shaka, it has to be a tip. So now Coleman is on Sims, and they brought Senny Njai in, who's about 6'11", to guard the inbounder. So Culver on Sims. Coleman. Got it. Tip. Oh, my goodness. They had a great look at it. And Sims not able to put it in. He had a great opportunity. Shaka Smart wanted a foul on a hold on the initial part of the play. That's why he's upset. 
He didn't get the call. They ran through the play. And Sims had a chance to tip it in. A lot of contact on that on that possession. Really good basketball look. game. Boy, how close is that? Wow. Did everything they yeah, could. Honestly, Johnny. couldn't tell if if another player touched it. Let's see, right here. It was tipped. Yeah, I mean, I, yep, it was. It was I think, but I think it was blocked. I don't think there was a foul. Do you? Right. No. 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 Franchise enjoyed it. That was a good basketball game. We thought it would be, and it was, John. It's the Big 12. Indeed. It's like this every night. We'll talk to you Monday night, buddy. How about West Virginia? Down by as many as 19 fifth straight road conference win. West Virginia wins at 84-82 for Fran Fraschilla and our entire outstanding crew. I'm John Chomby. So long from Austin, Texas. Mountaineers win it by two. The idol you love is back and will make your heart.